Hey everybody, today I'm talking about 10 board games that I feel need a second edition. Now whether that's because I feel some rules of these games are a little bit off or a little bit unnecessary, whether it has some production issues or maybe it needs an artwork overhaul, I'll talk through all of these things as I go through these games. But as a general rule, I, I like these games, I like the concept of these games and I feel like there's something there that is just a little bit off and needs a little bit of a fix in order to make it amazing. So let's get started at number 10. So at number 10, I have Xi'an, the Terracotta Army. Now this is a game I still recommend. I think this is a lovely game. This is a, a kind of a hand management style game. You're taking a, a bunch of cards and you're dividing them into two piles of two. And one of those cards is going to determine the action you can take. And the other one is going to determine the initiative of taking the action, which can be very important. And that's going to kind of show which resources you're going to take in. And then you're going to basically place a worker on one of these four worker placement spots, which will either let you build a, uh, build a statue and get an instant reward as you place it on this board. You're going to paint the statue your colour for area control bonuses. You're going to either collect uh, different items and artefacts in order to get set collection bonuses. And you can also climb this separate track to get these bonus powers. Now, that's that third thing I mentioned, that bonus track, is where I think this game could be improved. Because I always felt that that, that section of the board, or that strategy, wasn't quite as strong as the other two. So I'd have loved to see that be balanced out a bit more to make it a lot more kind of... Uh, make a bigger incentive to go there and to make those powers a little bit more juicy and a little bit more powerful um, so again people will want to go there and divert their strategies from the normal tried and tested ways of getting a bunch of points. Um, additionally I feel like the game could do with a few a few component upgrades. Now generally the production is pretty good as you have these plastic statues in your colour um, and even in neutral colours but I feel the card stock in this game was a little bit flimsy and could be improved and uh, the artwork as well is a little bit soulless and could be revamped but the thing that I think um, needs improving the most is the player board. So on the main board, you have these uh, kind of three different sections where you put this paper, uh, basically this bit of paper, which shows the different setup from game to game and the different incentives you get from placing your statues. And I would love to see that be just wrapped up into a really nice thick cardboard stock just to make the game feel a bit more deluxe and a bit more polished because it just felt a little bit flimsy and a little bit cheap. So yeah, I thought the uh, the components in its entirety were a bit of a mishmash of different quality components or quality types. So with a revamp, a new lick of paint, I think this game could really blow up because the gameplay is so accessible, it's fun, it's pretty crunchy and just has a lot of uh, interesting decisions from start to finish. So uh, those few fixes for Xi'an could take this from a seven up to an eight, an eight and a half or uh, even beyond that. So yeah, at number 10, I have Xi'an. At number nine, I have Burano. Now, Burano is a pretty heavy, complex Euro-style game as you are building this tower of these, um, these cubes of different colours, and then you are taking those cubes off from top to bottom in this, like, revealing system. So whenever you reveal a, or use a cube, you're revealing a bunch of others, and those cubes are all determine a different type of action you can take. Um, and those actions are pretty simple, such as um, you are going to be collecting cards, you're going to, to sell them off as set collection bonuses, you're trying to um, build these blocks on this central board and then you can build roofs on those blocks to get points. And additionally you can choose to do this lace work mechanism which, um, which will get you points in, in, in like area control uh, manner. Uh, this game has a lot to like about it. It's gorgeous to look at, has some really nice production. Um, however, I feel like the designers didn't know when to stop on this one. They just added a few too many uh, kind of finicky rules, a few fiddly rules and stuff that's not so intuitive. And I thought that was quite a big hurdle in getting this one to the table because that, that, that core mechanism of pulling the blocks off and building them onto that main town was great. It had a great table presence. It would definitely appeal to a lot of people and people would want to check this one out based on that table presence alone. The set collection was okay as you're sending from island to island. But again, there was this set, uh, other mechanism based on your player board, which would have to line up colours and you'd get points on different ways. And it just became a bit too confusing and a bit too unnecessary. Whereas if that was stripped out, I think the game would be would benefit from that. So I always feel it's a bit of a shame when game when designs don't know when to call it quits. I know this game has a lot of fans and people who like that additional um, that additional layer of complexity. But for me personally, I feel it's a little bit unnecessary. And if that's stripped out, the game will be better for it. So at number nine, I have Burano. 
At number eight, I have Bring Out Your Dead. Now, this is a pretty unknown game. I think it was Upper Deck who published this one quite a few years back. Uh, nice looking game, as it has this cartoony art, and it's quite a quite a, um, a bleak theme, but a bit depressing as you are trying to um, offload these coffins into these different uh, grave sites. Scoring points, uh, not only by placing them, but also by controlling those regions, uh, by having the most uh, coffins there. And I like this core mechanism where you would basically simultaneously play cards um, with initiative values on them, and then you would load these carts up of your coffins. But if you if you wanted to be a bit greedy and load too many, then you could risk losing them into the river, which will score you negative points at the end of the game. That was really cool. This game had some real big issues, mainly with the rulebook. So number one, the rulebook was absolutely shocking and one of the worst rulebooks I've ever seen. Uh, number two, the symbology on this game was confusing. So the, the symbology was, was pretty simple in itself, but there was a lot of symbology that was very similar to one another. And if you couldn't differentiate them, which I couldn't because I'm colorblind, and some of the differences between them were so minute that I just could not tell the difference between those symbols, which was a big part of the game. So that was a massive pain in the ass. Uh, and additionally, there was some rules in this game that just did, did not add up. So for example, uh, if you played a certain card, you could collect these uh, additional cards where the more your cards you collect, the more points you'd get. However, if you played those cards for their benefit rather than collecting them for a set collection, you would get more points than if you were to collect them um, as, as, as a set collection. So the incentive to actually collect these cards was just void. And that was just a complete broken rule that must have been just just not not caught out in playtesting. And this was a victim of just being underdeveloped, not being played enough, and just not being scrutinized enough. And it's a shame because it's a pretty accessible and pretty fun uh, uh, kind of area control style game that was a little bit different. So it, it would have been nice just to have seen those uh, things ironed out and just improved upon and to see what the game would be like if it actually did have enough time in the oven to cook and to be ready to be put on the shelves. So just a victim of not being developed enough and some small production issues and just didn't take colour blindness uh, into consideration. So that is Bring Out Your Dead at number eight. Uh, and number seven, this is a bit of a cheat because this is actually a third edition. This is Stronghold. So Stronghold is um, a pretty involved game. This is a completely asymmetric two-player game as it, it represents a siege of a castle. So one person's going to be the defender. The other one is going to be these hordes of goblins and orcs trying to invade this castle, trying to climb in and just overthrow the castle. So I love the theme. You know, I love big fantasy siege battles, your um, battles of the black waters, your helm's deeps. I love this kind of thing. And so I'm always looking forward to a board game that represents that well. This one was so close to being that. And the, the reasons that it stopped this one being as great as I think it could be was the asymmetry was a bit too much in my opinion. So you're always teaching two completely different games where one side of the game was alien to the other. And you know, you might say that's fine, you know, if you're playing with the same person again and again, but if you want to switch roles, you've got to learn the whole game again. And a bit like um, a bit like Burano, I think this game just had a little bit too much fiddliness, a little bit too much going on, and could benefit from some things being taken out of it, just to keep it hitting the table. Um, on top of that, I thought the game went on a bit too long, you know, venturing on that two to two and a half hours to play, which just is a bit too long for me, and it's going to be an obstacle to get this one to the table. And all of these things added up just made, meant it sat on my shelf, just collecting dust, when um, it should have been play being played because it is such a cool concept. And I know, you know, from the first edition to the second edition, a lot of things were improved, but I still feel like there's an extra, st an extra step to be taken just to make it that much more streamlined and that much more fun. So uh, at number seven, I have Stronghold. At number six, I have Venice. So Venice is actually the most recent game on this list. It only came out in 2020. Uh, this is a pick up and deliver style game as you're traveling these canals of Venice and um, visiting these different shops, collecting resources, uh, trying to fulfill contracts by delivering goods from one side of the city to the other. You have your own little, um, your own little gondola as you're collecting cubes on them and you have a kind of a, a capacity. All this stuff was great. I love the idea and the concept of this game. It looks nice. However, the main issue with this game, in fact, the, the key problem with this game was production. So this game, you have a lot going on on the board. You have gondolas from all the different players traveling around, which are quite big, chunky pieces. 
and the board was just not adequate and not big enough to fit those pieces on the board. So if more than one person was on the same spot on the board, you would have to kind of veer onto the buildings and go off the board. And it was just so, so kind of convoluted and so congested that it was just a massive burden to getting this game played. Additionally, there was these rules where some buildings you would kind of invest your workers in and the more you go there, the more you boost your kind of rewards you take from them. But you'd represent that by putting these meeples on these different locations and moving them up on this um, on this track. However, when you'd put the meeple on them, they'd cover up the symbology below it, which again was just a more, uh, just a nightmare to be played. And all these things just became such a burden that it really did uh, it really did hinder the gameplay and I think that's such a shame when there's a good game here where and all these things could have been avoided by making the board you know 20 30 percent bigger and it was just a massive oversight that should have been ironed out and it's just a shame that it didn't get addressed because it's a good game and I feel like just improving that board would make this game even better um, but the rules themselves were decent I, I do think the rules could have been a bit uh, there could have been some ceilings that, that could have been capped by doing certain actions. So when you travel, for example, you would trigger everything you, you pass on the way, whether that's passing other players, whether that's passing buildings. And that remembering everything you have to do on the way could be a bit fiddly and a bit annoying as well. Whereas if it was capped at maybe only doing a couple of actions on the way, then um, that would be a bit more streamlined and a bit more easy to digest. So shame and for one being so recent you know it's probably highly unlikely this this game will be rectified that is venice at number six uh, at number five i have shadows over camelot so this is a uh, uh, quite a popular and uh, kind of a almost a nostalgic cooperative game one of the first cooperative games out there actually as you are these uh, the knights of the round table you are working together so it's a pure cooperative game as uh, you are trying to collect these cards, basically fulfill these different objectives by building these poker hands. Um, I thought the concept of this game is excellent. I love the theme. I love this kind of medieval Arthurian theme. It's one of my favorite kind of skins out there. And this game had a lot to like. It was uh, had a certain charm about it. Um, however, I do feel that there were some issues with the gameplay. Uh, number one is that you'd only get two actions on your turn. And those actions would often be quite unsatisfying. You'd have to wait a lot of turns before it got back to your turn, where you take another pretty pretty boring action, such as you know healing up or um, you know do, do something very simple. And I feel like you know if you did more with your turn, it would be a bit more a bit more engaging. Uh, additionally, there was some murkiness in the communication you could have with other players. You know you'd have your hand of cards, and you would have to try and uh, argue your case on whether you were going to go here or there, but without being precise in the cards you had. And I find when when rules are that murky where you can communicate but you don't know how much you can communicate i find that it's just a massive uh, kind of free for all for breaking the rules and cheating and you may as well just not have that rule at all so i'd like to see that be limited and have that kind of alpha gaminess and that rules bending just eliminated from the game whatsoever um so yeah it's, it's more of an issue of that because i i think this is more of a thing where I want a game where you have to do all these things. You, know, you have to search for the Holy Grail. You have to uh, fight off all the different invading tribes. You have to fight off the trebuchets on Camelot. All this thing is just absolutely fantastic. But yeah, that those few rules issues I had just didn't quite make this game be a keeper for me, whereas I really wanted to, it to be. So you know, if, if there was ever a game that I wanted to like more than I actually did, I think Shadows of Camelot was an example of that. Now, I have heard rumours that they are trying to re-implement this into a new kind of modern theme. But to be honest, I'm not that interested in that. I'd like to see this theme be used again, but to have those rules, uh, things just, just, just improved upon. And I appreciate this is more of a personal taste thing because I know this is a popular game out there. So at uh, number five, I have Shadows of Camelot, Shadows over Camelot. At number four, I have Genoa. So Genoa is, I think, one of the first board games designed by one of my favourite designers, uh, Rudiger Dorn. Uh, this is a negotiation style game that, if you're familiar with Istanbul, this game has some similar mechanisms. As you have this stack of discs, and you are dropping these discs as you, as you travel, one at a time, and visiting these different locations. And the idea of this game is that you, when you take your movement, other people can kind of choose to uh, pay you to do certain things. They might say, you know, 
if you visit this uh, merchant, then I'll give you uh, X amount of coins, for example. And it's all about weighing up whether you want to kind of forsake your actions in order to uh, take money off the other players uh, so they can get their actions done. And it's just that little economy of what you're going to do and what's going to benefit you the most. I love that. I think that's that's wonderful. So theme, theme and the concept, brilliant. The issues I had with this game was number one, it was too long. So there was too many rounds in this game. It seemed to outstay its welcome and just it just dragged on and on and on. Second is that there was just I think there was enough variety in these different contracts and things that you had to do. You could pretty much quite clearly math out how much you were going to benefit more than the other players or if they were going to benefit off you. Whereas if there's a bit more added into the game, such as games like Chinatown, for example, you have that speculation a bit more and you have that um, just kind of potential to strike more interesting deals. And this one, I felt that was capped a bit. It just had a bit of a glass ceiling there. And if that was uh, rectified and you still had that idea of, you know, it's some player's turn, you can move around, people are pulling you in one direction, people are pulling you in the other direction. You got to decide what you want to do. Um, I love that. So I'd love to see this be proved upon, improved upon. If there was a second edition, I would undoubtedly check this one out because it was so, so close to being a keeper, but it just didn't quite do it for me for those issues. So at number four, I have Genoa. At number three, I have Francis Drake. So this is a game where I certainly can't complain about the production. It's a wonderfully produced game, a gorgeous looking game, as you have this huge map and you are basically traveling down this pier in Plymouth collecting these different resources and you have that really cool mechanism where you can go as far as you want but you can never go back on yourself that was fantastic uh, and once you got to the sea you would choose to kind of go off on your little voyage visiting these different locations trying to uh, have little battles to get these gems and rewards and you would program it blindly so you didn't quite know where other people were going you could take a guess uh, you could try to prioritize the regions that uh, you think other people would want. You'd have to invest in different resources. You would have to invest in cannons in order to fight these pirates off. You'd have to invest in uh, kind of resources in order to travel further on the map. All that was fantastic. The issues I had with this game were that there were the game arc was pretty much non-existent. There was three phases or three rounds of the game that were pretty much carbon copies of one another. And any investment you made in the earlier rounds didn't stick around in the future round. So it was pretty much wipe a new surface clean and start again from scratch three times over. And I think that kind of gameplay doesn't quite land nowadays. Um, and additionally, I thought the game was a bit too long. Uh, it did take probably around two hours to play, whereas it should have been maybe 75 to 90 minutes. And if they managed to add that game arc in, managed to add a bit of an engine into the game, as well as shaving some time off, uh, this could be fantastic because it has a real fun factor for a pretty simple Euro and it did that kind of uh, that one-way system mechanism really well. So yeah, it had a lot to like and another really near miss for me. Uh, that was Francis Drake. So would love to see a second edition of that game. Uh, at number two, I have Lancaster. So Lancaster... An amazing game, you know, I'll stay straight out front, you know, this is a great worker placement game, one of the best worker placement games out there. As you are placing these knights onto the board of different values, when people go to that certain spot, you can choose to raise the power of that knight and kick them back off that spot. So it has a real nice level of player interaction and a real tension of getting the best spots to get different rewards, such as collecting these different nobles to come to your to come to your dining hall, and those nobles would give you uh, would give you influence cubes, which would let you kind of manipulate the game state and rules in the game. It had a lot to, or a lot I loved about the game. It was so clever, really fresh, and different ideas and different concepts of a worker placement game. Uh, the the reason why I put this on this list is because. Now, number one, I think the the visuals of the game were a bit polarizing. It wasn't as inviting as it could have been. It could have been a bit more vibrant, a bit more, uh, a bit less stale looking. And don't get me wrong, I do like a dry, dusty looking Euro, but this one just seemed a little bit soulless and a little bit. The artwork was a bit too computer generated, and it just didn't quite look right to me. Uh, some of the production choices in this game were fantastic, as all your different workers had different uh, thicknesses on them. Like they're basically these big chunky wooden blocks, and they would the kind of the thicker they were, the stronger the knight was. And that that was fantastic. Um, additionally, 
to get the most out of this game, I felt like you had to inject a lot of the expansion material into it. Uh, otherwise, it was a pretty decent worker placement game, but not a great one. But with the additional expansion content, I thought it was a great worker placement game. However, with that expansion content, there was a bit too much um, stop and start in terms of the housekeeping. So you do this phase, you resolve it, you do this, then this, then this, and this. And it would be a bit jarring and a bit too much downtime as you very kind of uh, meticulously go through phase after phase after phase resolving each one. Whereas if that was ironed out and we had a definitive version of the game where all the best parts of these expansions were put into the core experience, I think that could be fixed. And I would love to see that because that, to be honest, that was the main reason why this left my collection was because it was a bit fiddly in choose, picking and choosing the expansion material you would want and knowing which order to resolve them. Whereas if it was a bit more clear cut and just a, you know, a one optimal experience, then this game would no doubt come back into my collection with, with no hesitation whatsoever because I think the game is marvellous. So uh, at number two, Lancaster. And finally, at number one, the game that I'd most like to see a second edition being made is Alchemists. Now, Alchemists is a pretty involved hybrid of deduction and worker placement. As you take the role of these alchemists, you're trying to collect these different materials and see what happens when you combine them. And the idea is we're trying to work out how to make these different potions and then publish your theories before the other players do. You can try out these potions on these different kind of apprentices. You can collect these bonus artifacts. You can sell these potions to traveling uh, kind of adventurers. I love the theme of this game. I love the concept and the premise. I think it's wonderful. Uh, there are, however, some pretty big obstacles that stop this one getting to the table. And I think those obstacles could be improved. Now, this game is actually really popular. I think this was, it might even still be in the top 100 on BGG, if not maybe slightly out of that top 100, uh, because there is so much like about it. However, it is confusing. There is quite a lot of fiddly symbology in things in terms of how you work out these materials combined with one another. And explaining that to someone for the first time is like talking an alien language. And um, so it's one of those games where once you teach it to someone, you want to pretty much keep it with that person. And it feels like a lot of work to teach it to someone else. Uh, so I thought that was a bit of a shame. I think it could be improved upon by making maybe making the symbology a bit easier to understand. Um, additionally, I think the production could be improved on quite a bit. For example, you'd have this pretty big structure of this big uh, deduction board as you're plugging these cards in, you're using an app to scan uh, these cards in and how they combine with, with one another. I think that could have been a bit sturdier. Sometimes you would find these little tokens would get trapped in the board, they'd fall off and you'd forget where they'd be. Um, additionally, the actual worker placement board itself was a bit... <sighs> It seemed a bit novice-like, novice-like. It wasn't polished. It, the pieces of the board were these little kind of transparent cubes, which felt cheap. The artwork, I, I think, didn't quite look right. It looked a bit, it looked a bit rushed. And I think it, if it was more deluxified and kind of revamped, I think there'll be a whole new market for this game because I know deduction is always uh, enjoyed and it's always a popular mechanism, and. This is probably one of the best deduction games I've ever played. If you can get your head around that, those obstacles and get your head around that symbology, that awful teach, that steep learning curve. Um, but the actual core mechanism here, the core idea about being these arch alchemists, it's great. You know, the theme is so, uh, it's logical and you can understand what you're trying to do in this game. Whereas a lot of games you can't do that. And considering this is a, it's pretty Eurofied, um, you know, it does a good job of still making that theme connect with the mechanism. So I would love to see a revamped version, a version two or a second edition of Alchemists. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. Additionally, if you wanna keep the channel going, you can choose to back me on Patreon and I'll leave the links below to, uh, to those. So for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.